How many betrayals we talked about with Jay? This ain't the first one, but this the first one we talking about because the only one affected us. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, big deal, he everybody over. Jermaine Dupree stupid for listening to him. That's, that's what I think. We all know Jay. So once he does what he did, how he did Rockefeller, why do you think he do anything else? That's Jay. Those principles don't mean anything. Jay runs with the bag, period. That's it. All that cool. So you that man, that's on you. I'm not gonna be a wet wounded duck blow. This nigga, you know, he played Rockefeller. And I don't remember if he was rolling, if he was praying. Nah. I don't remember what bleed. I did. know exactly what, what it was, you, man. What because was it? I f with Dane. He was mm -hmm. my guy. Mm -hmm. And it hurt me to see you just didn't see what was going on. Mm. And I was trying to tell Hold on to your seats, people, because Memphis Bleak has just called out Dame Dash, accusing him in a furious tirade of betraying their longtime buddy and rapper Mogul Jay. This has the hip-hop world abuzz. Bleak didn't hold back while divulging all of the gory details and what transpired. According to Bleak, Dame Dash's actions behind the scenes were a clear stab in the back, and the betrayal is still a sour location for the whole Rockefeller family, including Jay-Z. Why? Cuz that line put a stamp on my career. See, I guess in his mind was like a secure, like just a shout out. Mm -hmm. But people take it, you know, literally and serious. Like I'm just chilling somewhere. I'm not working. As you see, I'm here. This bleach. You pimp hoes? Do you still pimping hoes, man? I know I ain't pimping no more, man. I wish hoes could come bring me some money if they want. I, I'm still, I'm still pimp bag. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's, hey, hey, you ain't, you ain't in the, yeah, you ain't, ain't in the field. But nah, you, you man. accept that money. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I take it. Word. Yeah. And you gonna, gonna buy it off? I'm taking it. I, on, I, I point you in the right hold. direction. You heard? That's only missing is some a little, um, little guidance. Mm -hmm. All right, so you know, automatically, um, I'm, I'm, I'm Atlanta, Georgia. Man, man, Tennessee ain't that far from. <laughs> and, you know, like That's what's up. Shout I'm out a big fan of him. Yeah, yeah. You know, Memphis like, oh, you from Memphis, so, though? Nah, nah, I'm not from Memphis. That's how I got the name, though. We did a show in Memphis. When Jay dropped the song, Ain't No Nigga, okay. we was on a little road trip. We was in Memphis. So this, this girl was in the club, and she literally walked right up to us and was like, I want to welcome y'all to make it easy money, Pimpin' and Hoes in Style, Tennessee. You know, me, 16 years old, what? That's me. So right from there, Memphis Blue. Right, <laughs> did, she, hold on. just oh, like did that. Did you remember this lightning? Just like that, just like that. I don't remember the girl, the female, you know, it was many, many moons ago. Okay. That's how she, once she broke the acronym down, and I'm like, that's what Memphis Tennessee stand for? She like, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's me, that's me now. I'm Memphis Bleak, man. Hey, you know what I got hot on um, Memphis Bleak? Where's my joke? Because you had my dog. Shout out Tip, there. shout out my man Trick Daddy. Yo, that's, that's, when, the, that's what that's I, that's when I was like, on. yo, Tip made it. <laughs> tip made it. When he was on. Like, I, I, I became a Tip fan once he dropped 24. You know? From there, I'm like, man, Shorty put it down. Mm -hmm. I got to do something with Shorty. He, he represents the same code I represent. So it's only a must we get on a record. Then Trick, of course, he the OG from Miami. I messed with him. And they brought Man, say them the niggas' table. names, man. They want to be a. Nah, man, street niggas don't want to be famous. Okay, got right. you. Got you. That's right. Only the people on Twitter want to be famous. I got you. <laughs> you ain't never lie I, I, that's why I had to get off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> why did you choose, you know what I'm saying, Trick Daddy to get on it? Why did you, why did you put him on this song? Because at the time, you know, and plus Trick, my dude, we, we good friends. And like I said, we got mutual friends in the street. And he was running Miami at the time. He was the man. Like, when you think of the South, it's Atlanta, then it was Miami, like it is today. What you into though, man? Well, like, what's something crazy about me? Just people be like surprised to know about, like a hobby or something. What What you be doing, man? In your oh, off time? Oh man, my off time, I'm Call of Duty in it out, man. I'm shooting niggas to death, man. I can't kill you in real life, so I kill you fuckers on the internet. Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> if you could kill anyone of you, which one would you kill? I ain't got no beef for nobody to kill nobody. I don't wish death on nobody. I'm not that type of dude, man. I want everybody to get money, success, and leave my fucking name out their mouth. That's just it. <laughs> when I say Brownsville, what does that mean to you, though? That's my home birthplace, man. Rockaway Projects, Marcus Garvey, Tilden, something, Boulevard. You already know, man. That's where I was born at, man. Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it means more than that. My grandmoms, grandpops, my G cousins. You don't fuck with Mike Tyson, D -Sets. man. Come on, man. Yeah, but I don't know Tyson. I know oh. the D sets. I was born there. <laughs> <laughs> we hear a lot of names on, like, you know, a lot of the Rockefeller Projects here. Hey, when I say Emory Jones, what does that what does that mean? Because a lot of people don't don't know who that is, like in the regular world. Who is Emory Jones? 
When you say Emory Jones to me, that means like what, what OG really stands for. Original gangster, stand up G, real person, keep it 1000. Like a lot of people use these terms and just say it. But when you talk Emory Jones, that's definition of it. He's the realest guy I've ever met in my life. Like, people make movies about gangsters, and at the end, you all be like, ah, if you ever make a movie about Emory, about Emory we all gonna love it. So, mm. I just leave it at that, man. Okay. You know, a lot of people don't wanna be famous in that circle. They just, it's just a how they just connected to it. Mm. You know what I mean? So, you can't get around it. Jay, the biggest sunlight that you're gonna see. So, once you stand next to him, you hot. Another name we hear all the time inside the, uh, the rock world. You know, what, what we heard a few times. Behavior. Who is behavior? <laughs> Y'all trying to get the answers out of Greasy, trying to, huh? Trying to get them. Trying to get I can't talk to all of them. Behaving is from my projects. He from We all from the same building. Me, okay. him, Jay, everybody. We all from the same building. His sister was my godmother. Rest in peace, dog. You know what I'm saying? And him and Jay, you know, they had their hustle ties and, and things went sour. Like, you ask me, you want to know the real deal? All you got to do is listen to... It was all good just a week ago. Oh. What's the joint with him and R. Kelly where you know your true friends when you both got money? Oh. A alike, uh -huh. B alike. Right. We don't vibe no more because we don't see it like. And then read the Haven book. I ain't gonna hear from me. I can't I can't give it up, baby. I try to get me cute, huh? God, that's your rap. Okay. Okay. Now what's up with Dame, man? Dame cool. I seen Dame in uh, London about a couple years ago. But you know, like I said, Dame held me down in this game. He got me out of bad contracts, got me in good contracts. So I could never diss Dame. Dame taught me a lot, showed me a lot. And things just went sour, man. Like, could I, would I wish I could reverse it? Yeah, but he ain't a present. Yeah, man, I can't do nothing about it, baby. And you made your first film debut in Paper Soul. <laughs> I hated that movie. Why? Because I didn't want to do it. I ducked Dame for like a year. Jay made me do that movie. Then him and Dame calling me in the office like, oh, you got to do it. I'm like, nah, I ain't no comedy nigga. What? <laughs> <laughs> my life is real. Yeah, I ain't want to do it. So they, they they forced me to do that. Now, we, now being that, you know, there was a coat, that was like a hood classic right there. Now you see Kevin Hart is on top. Dude, when, you, yeah. when you met the dude back in the day, did you ever think that he'd be this big? I couldn't measure where he would be, but I knew he would be big, man, because that boy was funny, man. Just off the intro, just meeting him to be funny in person, because a lot of dudes is funny on camera. In a recent interview, Fleek, who has supported Jay-Z from the start, came clean and accused Dame Dash of putting his ego and ambitions ahead of their brotherhood. According to Bleak Dash, Dame Dash's actions were more than just business decisions, they were deep wounds that permanently damaged one of the most illustrious friendships in hip-hop history. Those are the hits that I got. Yeah. And then, that Dame alluded to the fact, like, well, you, you, you didn't really do a good show because you did Hove records. I'm an artist, uh -huh. so I totally understood. Uh-huh. And then y'all had an argument. <laughs> you already know. This was the illest argument. Yo, everybody on the plane acted sleep, yeah. by the way, right? It was everybody, too. It was mad niggas on the plane. Yeah, everybody was on the plane. We playing space. You was snoring. We, we smoking weed. The no, pilot oh. wanted to kick us off. We smoking. Because I'm going to keep it 100. This is the first time I was plane. on a, yeah. we, a private it's plane. It's the plane. Where at, wow. first, wow. where at first, the pilot was like, we cool. Y'all can smoke till you get to such and such. Like, right. that, that's the first time. So I'm up rolling. Everybody else, and Dame said something else to Bleak, and Bleak just stood there. <laughs> and I don't remember if he was rolling, if he was praying. Nah. I don't remember what Bleak I did. I know exactly what it was, you, man, what because was it? I fucked with Dame. He mm -hmm. was my guy, mm -hmm. and it hurt me to see you just didn't see what was going on. Mm. And I was trying to tell him. And what, and what do you mean by that? Like, like, you know how when you try to, it's like, like, I learned something, right? Put it like this. When a nigga fuck with a bitch, right? Mm -hmm. And he love her. Mm -hmm. Now you tell him, now you see Shorty fucking with the homie. She wildin'. She wildin'. And you tell him, mm -hmm. now he blame you. It's mm -hmm. your fault they broke up. And then he get the herpy lip. Yeah. And it's fucked up like, for him. He don't even yeah. know. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? You told him. That was the same situation. Right. Like, just mm -hmm. without you, the bitch. So like, you was gonna tell him. That my nigga, you moving too fast. You like, wildin'. Because I'm talking to the big homie. I'm hammering mm -hmm. through the pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know, the streets talk. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I seen that, I seen this day coming, my right. nigga. I told all of them, I had a conversation wow. with each and every person. Now when you Robert say that, who, who, like... I'm talking about Beans, mm -hmm. Petey, mm -hmm. Gunners, mm -hmm. Freeway, mm -hmm. and Day. 
And mm-hmm. then that conversation was on the plane. But I, I had a one-on-one with everybody and told niggas, man, I, I see this day coming. He was trying to keep it together. Yes. No, he was like, that's why niggas don't fuck with you, Dame. <laughs> Yo, for me, that's what you heard? That's what he said? Yeah, oh, I got I more. Told him. I got more. I like, tell him because yeah. like, he was coming at me. And it's like, right. my nigga, I'm with you. I, I ain't remember you supposed to be on this plane. That's exactly what Mike said. My nigga, I'm not supposed to be on this plane. I fuck with hoving them. I could be right. home on a plane, chilling. Right. Right. I came because I fuck with you. But then he, he trying to come at me, and it's like, that. my nigga, when it's over, niggas right. ain't going to fuck with you. Damn. Niggas don't fuck with you now. Mm. And, man, come on, my G. So you saw that. He saw it coming. You saw that where Dame is at right now. You saw that, like, then? Not, not, not I don't want to say right now, like, I saw that, like, yo, niggas going to be in this situation. Right. Because like, he going through a lot of personal. But what I mean, yeah. like, with the industry doors closed and the bridges mm. burnt, I mm. saw that. Because mm. you talking to major power players. Remember, right. we was around. He flipped on Randy Acker. Randy Acker's here somewhere. Shout out Randy yeah, Shout Acker, out Randy you know Acker. I mean? He's my man. Let's make some noise like, for Randy Acker. You know, <laughs> gotta keep Jewish people around. Gotta keep Jewish people around. Like, you yes. know what I mean? Like, look at all the power players that was around. Leo, mm. Kevin Lyles, mm. Steve Stout. Mm. Like, everybody, them people are the people that's making it happen. Steve right. Bottleson, like, right. they pushing Steve the Bottles, butt. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? Like, they making it. The old school OGs never changed for money or fame the turmoil and tension had been building behind closed doors for years. In the rap game, you can't be labeled a true buddy if you betray your boys. Brewing as Dash allegedly took decisions that Rockefeller Records Foundation and stunned Jay-Z. From clandestine talks to shady transactions, the betrayal hurt deep and Bleak is here to reveal all the specifics. I took Jay-Z and shopped him to every single label and they all said no. I wouldn't have been so generous with Jay to Jay. It was more friendship for me and money for him. But he did things that I thought he would never do. So now I would be like, oh, he would do that. And I would make sure it didn't happen. How do you feel towards Jay-Z now? I don't feel nothing. The difference between Jay and Kanye, and I say it, Jay is about the money, period. I did partnerships with my artists. With the artists I work with in the businesses that I do now. Just because I want people to maintain their manhood. Like, I don't ever say you signed to me. I don't, I'm, I'm not letting, I don't like the way that sounds. So, you know, even the verbiage and the, the whole thing, just your masters, you know what I'm saying? All of those things are like trigger words, you know, that unconsciously control us. Can we smoke in? If you want it, we got yes. Is there, I don't know if there's, is that a fire alarm? I just didn't know. You're not even from here, man. I have no idea. Don't even get out of here. That's just, you just, you just, we're not in a hotel, okay? Is it, is it gonna go off? Cause you think it'll go off? I have no idea what that is. It should be fine. It is what it is. It man. is what it is, you know? I'm trying to, I really want to understand why Rockefeller won and you know. It's cause what, it was real. Cause it was real. It was real and I wasn't having it. <coughs> Rocco, they weren't, no one wanted to sign. Think about how, this is the record industry. I took Jay-Z and shopped him to every single label and they all said no. I had to do it myself. Why did they say no? Either he was too old, he rapped too fast, they just didn't have it. So we were like, we'll do it ourselves. So that's the thing. Remember when I said before, people been telling me I'm not a superhero and I know I am, right? So if someone told you that you couldn't sell companies and do the things that you did, because to them, it's superhero shit. It's a dream that they can't come true for them. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like you've done things that people want to do. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, if you came with that idea to certain people, they'd say, give you 30 reasons why you can't do it. The reason why Rockefeller was good, the reason why I did what I had to do was because I knew how to have a clear dream without anyone obstructing it. I knew how to visualize winning. So if somebody told me, you can't do that because of this, get out my dream. Because that's not the last thought I'm going to have with my dream because my mind is powerful. And whatever I see in my mind, I can make happen. That whole stint of your career, the Rockefeller chapter, as a, yeah, do you have any regrets surrounding that when you look back and think, I wish I'd done that differently. I wish someone had told me this thing. I, that's Rockefeller. That shit is art. Why would I want to mess with that? Look how it's impacted the world. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there'll be things, certain things that just because I know better, I do different. But who cares, man? I was like a kid. What are those things? If you're giving me I, advice, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have been so generous with Jake to Jake. 
it was more friendship for me and money for him. I, and I always felt that, but I ignored it a little. You regret ignoring that? I don't regret it. I just, I wouldn't have, the things that, I wouldn't have let certain things happen because I didn't think they could happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, he would never do that. But he did things that I thought he would never do. So now I would be like, oh, he would do that. And I would make sure it didn't happen. So Rockefeller would probably still exist right now. I made those mistakes too. With nice. business it is what it is. It, actually, the life that I got after Rockefeller was so fuck. It's been so fulfilling and I've had so much fun. You know, I just opened up art galleries all over the world and made music with cool people. And I just, I just been doing cool shit for the last 10 years. I was, I was compelled by the, what you said earlier when you said Rockefeller would still exist. Yeah. Okay, you tell me what was the end of Rockefeller and why it happened. Uh, from what I understand, and again, this is just what I've read, there was a dinner that took place between you and Jay where Jay wanted to sell Rockefeller to Def Jam. No, that's not right. Okay, well, there you go. We, had a, we, we met at dinner because I had heard from L.A. Reid that Jay was like, I'll take the job of president, but Damon and Biggs can't be down with Rockefeller. And L.A. Reid was like, yo, and I thought John McNeely had said this shit. I was like, Jay could have never said that. And we went and he did me like public place, the whole shit, and told me this shit. And I, I was just like, you fucking serious? Jay told you that. He said, yeah, I want to be looked at as a businessman. And as long as you're around, I can't be looked at as a businessman. But I was like, what's that got to do with Rockefeller? So he was like, yo, y'all can have Rockefeller, but just give me my reasonable doubt masters back. I said, let me think about it. And I went and did a, a screening of the Woodsman. And I was like, yo, come with me to the screening so he could walk the carpet. He's like, nah, you're all dressed up. And I was like, this nigga never helps. But my point is, regardless of what, Rockefeller still existed. It's just I didn't run it. So why isn't there still a Rockefeller? Rockefeller was sold, right? In the nah, end? It, it, Jay was, they gave Jay, it was sold, but they gave Jay to run Rockefeller. So Kanye was still there. Everybody was still there. Why is there no more Rockefeller? You tell me. Well, usually when a rapper runs uh, other rappers. Let's go back to 1995 in order to comprehend the significance of this interview. With Jay-Z at the forefront as its star artist, Dame Dash and Kareem B.S. Burke co-founded Rockefeller Records, which quickly grew from a small independent label into a powerhouse in the music industry. The trio was unstoppable, releasing hit after hit and signing some of the biggest names in hip-hop. Jay-Z and Dame Dash were inseparable and frequently spotted together in public, partying and pushing their brand while exuding swagger. Rockefeller was more than just a label, it was a movement. In, in like but I, I didn't want to run Rockefeller no more. I was done with that. I was, at that time, I was already at Rockware. My office was not, I wasn't fucking with music no more. And Rockware was making a lot of money, right? Yeah, but it was just more, I was just inspired. I was just sick of being in that building and dealing with dumb shit. I was done with the music business. I wanted to do fashion. I, just, I was done with it, so I looked at it as an out. Like, out of obligation, I would have still ran Rockefeller because I gave my commitment. But because they was acting silly, I was like, yo, take it. I, I want to go anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But, you know. How do you feel towards Jay-Z now? I don't feel nothing. No, no bad feelings, no good feelings? No feelings. I deal with feelings and they would probably not be so complimentary. He's obviously achieved you know, tremendous success in all he's done in multi-industries and all that kind of thing. What is what is it about him that you think has put him in that position? His characteristics? I don't want to talk about Jay. You don't want to talk about him? Not really. Like, you know, I know what Rockefeller was and how we did business. So it's hard to, I, I don't even try to figure that shit out. Um, Period. You have a really unique perspective in the sense that you, you, you know, yourself, Kanye, Jay, you got to see the the characteristics that made them go on their journeys, and that's really what I what I was trying to get at is like, what are those? The, the difference between Jay and Kanye, and I say it, Jay is about the money. Period. And Kanye is about the art and the money, <laughs> but it's the art. You know what I mean? Like, Jay, like, like, like Kanye is a real artist. Like Kanye is in different dimensions. Like, you know, he's. He really focuses on that fashion. I never saw Jay do that, ever. Not nothing near that. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor. Become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps them. Um, would you be responsible yeah. for babies? And he said no. 
Yeah. Th that's the truth? Absolutely true. So, what my state does that put you in? Does that put you, because there's two things that I'm thinking you could think. Damn, let's do this foul. Or now, as an older person, you could probably say, you know what, I was a little out of control. Maybe I got to take account of more. But at that time, I'm sure you wasn't thinking like that. What, what was going through your mind? At that time, it was, all right, put it like this. Rockefeller Records was the only thing that I've ever been a part of that I thought was honest. Still, still. Like, niggas really fucked with me for what it was. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I was, I'm from South Philly, so, you know what I mean? Niggas smile, shake your hand, you know what I mean? Pray next to you, turn around, blow your head off. Like, just smile, shake your hand, pray next to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. all that vicious. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah. Kill you, wash your body. Right. You know just I mean? pray. Kill your son and fornicate with your daughter. Uh, yeah, that's where I come from. Right. That's the world that I that I lived in. So me being with Rockefeller, the loud familiar, I held more to that. It's like I got something, and you know what I mean. And it's like these niggas got me. And they don't want shit from me. They just want me to do this. It's music. They got me. And that's all I ask. You got me. That's where I came from. I never looked at me having a career. I never looked at the business. It was live familiar, live familiar, live familiar. We are family. All you got to do, you got me. So at that time, when, uh, you know, I'm going to court, and we, all, we about to be on tour, we on tour, so oh, no. yeah, we on we on a whole nother tour. So you know, I'm I'm going for my bail hearing and the feds, and the judge asked Jay, you know, everybody's saying all these good things and all that, you know, what I mean, the character witnesses, Dane, and you know, my everybody saying even Jay said a whole lot of good things about me, and the judge was going to let me go, minus. And she said, you know, would you be willing, and that's the part that people know, like, would you be willing to be responsible for his whereabouts, not be responsible for my actions, just his whereabouts, would you be willing to do that, provide us with all the information, you know, saying that he's going to be here, there, there, there. And after all that good shit, he said no. But it was like the way he said it, and he put his head down. He was like, "No, I've never been crushed like that ever in my life." Cause I'm like, "Damn, this is my man!" Like I, and I looked at it at the, t I looked at it like, "All right, no, ain't it? What if I had to get the fuck out of there? I'm in jail. I, I'm still tall. All my shit." But what if I really needed to go? This was going on my mind. Like, get out of jail, you say? Like, yeah, like, bro, I had a tip of murder and in the state and the federal gun charge and all this shit. The 40 years is over. <coughs> this is my face of 40 years. What if I had my mind thinking like, damn, what if I really need to go? Be on the run and go. Like, I'm from, like, this is my man and I love him. At least get that. Thing. No, I'm getting my man. I'm getting him out by any means necessary. So for me to, to look him in his eyes and I'm sitting, I'm shackled. Ran the whisk, ankles and everything, and the man was like, oh. Like that was that that I don't know, like that was just fuck that was that fucked me up. It took everything in me not to like let one go. Like that was like that was Thank bad. Jay Z feud, mm -hmm. you know that's been out for a long time. I know you spoke on it before, but what is the? I mean, what is where did this come from, and what is the status of? Well, it? if you see people like me and Dane, we'd be together every day, because mm -hmm. we was our, our drive was for Rockefeller, you know what I'm saying? So we ain't have anything else to do, so we'd be together every day, every day. Our waking day, we was worried about doing something else to make Rockefeller grow. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, we'd jump in the van, we'd go to Maryland, we'd go anywhere, you know what I'm saying? 
And um, now we got our focus is everywhere, mm -hmm. different things. There's Rock Aware, there's State Property, there's, you know, there's Armadale, there's so many different things, as well as things that we always want to do on our own, mm -hmm. which is, you know, when when people see that, you know, it's drifting apart, we always been polar opposites, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but when people see us drifting apart and doing different things like that, it, it leads to like talking and then that just grows and it grows and mm -hmm. um but I mean I'm I'm the kid's uh you know I'm his son's godfather you know what I'm saying that's my brother me and him um we work to, to this thing happen and we both realize our dreams together so we gonna always have that bond mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's not a beef it's just that it's just growing Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That sometimes growing means growing apart, not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. Like I like it into like a L.A., you know, like I said, baby face situation. You mm -hmm. know, we all got things that we want to do. And we want to do separately. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is cool. Like I'm happy for him. You know what I mean? As well as, you know, he's happy for me. It's just that it's part of life. It's part of growing up. Has he made um, decisions that you disagree with and Absol vice versa? Absolutely. Like I mean, what? that's like, just part of being in yeah. the business. Which business decisions did he make that you wasn't? See, and then we going back to violating that trust. I wouldn't do that. But, oh, okay. But right. absolutely. I thought it was all eyes on Tasia. <laughs> <my bad. laughs> no, you know, I mean, absolutely. Listen, you want the whole fucking thing to hear it? Keep the door open. I don't give a fuck. Y'all should have called Damon Dash, made sure I was privy to it, and made sure I was CC'd or whatever. You don't send an email randomly at 10.30 at night, whatever it is at night, the day we all had a wait. That shit don't fly right. That shit is fucked up. And on another level, it's not for y'all to Y'all do not control any of my artists. That's why I'm asking questions. Everybody looking dumb in the face. So what were we doing? What was we talking about in terms of the day? Let me know. Why don't you just call the meeting? Why? Because you do want to take... Why? Why? Who cares? Why? We all here. Why now you want to call the meeting? Because you know no one needs to see here. No one is so to get the fuck out. I don't give a fuck. Then get out. This is not about you. We're going to do no, something about Jay. We're going to do it together. Obviously. All right, then. But why you didn't call me? No, you want to make excuses? You can talk all you want. This is treacherous. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of this shit. And go get Leo. You always leave when you ain't got shit to fucking say. Say you just got sued for this bullshit, the same kind of shit. Y'all better stop fucking with me. Y'all gonna get your man in some trouble, I'm telling you. So if y'all wanna talk about Jay, if there was an agenda, let's go through it. Nah, we're gonna reschedule. What the fuck you mean y'all gonna reschedule? We're gonna reschedule, man. What you mean you're gonna reschedule? You get the fuck out. Look, y'all heard now, now that Rockefeller said no one to go. You're not a leader. You don't know shit about my culture. Get the fuck out. You don't know shit about Jack. Get the fuck out, Randy Acker. That's why all artists kick your fucking ass anyway. That's why you stay getting punched in your face by other artists. Not by Dan Dash, but other people, because you don't respect my culture. That's why. That's why you've been smacked. Not by me, by other people. Get out of here. Beat it. No one needs you. Get out. Clear sample or something. Call security. How y'all calling me is without me being there. That's what I need to know. They come on, man. That's what I need to know. You get your staff, get the f In the years that followed, both men sparred with one another in the public, but neither revealed all the specifics of their fallout. Jay-Z kept rising, becoming a businessman in addition to a legend in the music industry. Mogul, in the meantime, had several monetary and legal obstacles as he struggled to return to the degree of success he previously enjoyed with Rockefeller. Show from how high the system pimp, and also me, y'all know the host with the most, Mr. Reggie Carroll, and my motherfucking friends. Come on, man, we gonna be at Sully's Comedy Cellar. That's 9306. Yeah, I mean, Harford motherfucking roll. Showtime starts at 8 p.m. Show. That bleak interview that on the train terms, and we gonna we gonna discuss that. Briefly, right now, and then we gonna go into like a lot more details later, and shit, because I gotta keep going to where I need to go. But um, shout out to Jazzo, man. That's that's a, that you did a great interview on um, Mad Hoffa, man. That was that was that was uh, dope. Um, I think you got your point across with how things went down with you and this guy, with you and Jay, and. My uh, 
the way I see the, the, the breakdown of that interview is that you know a lot of people in my box talking about yo everybody's scared to talk about this dude talk about this dude talk about this dude and you kind of you did it on a gentleman level you see what I'm saying like you said what you said on a gentleman level the nigga can respect that um to where you know it seemed to be with everybody that seems to have to have a get on an interview and, and, need, and gotta talk about them it's almost like they can't really say what it is what's, what was the problem or this or he was wrong and that's what's the that that's what bothers me most that a nigga can't say that he was wrong so basically what you get from Jazzo is what you get from most of the people that Jay had an effect on and it all boils down to you love him you love the nigga you love him you, you love him that's your that's your folks that's your you know you feel like that's your family that's who your day one was you, you love him you got love for your for, for, for him you got love for him trust me I know what that feel like you even got love on him, yeah. So it's not, but you also can say, yo, you know what I'm saying? I love this nigga and shit. I fuck with him, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes he do some fucked up shit, you know what I'm saying, that I don't agree with. You know what I'm saying? And that's just plain and simple. Whether I'm a friend to where I can tell him that and it don't be no emotional feelings and shit, you know what I'm saying? Or I know what type of nigga he is. And you notice in mad interviews that when people talk about him, they say the word, they use sensitive. You know, you know how, you know, he's kind of sensitive. No, nigga, I'm from Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. We don't use that. We say, nigga acting like a bitch. That's what we say. All that tone down for Hollywood or certain platforms, Sensitive, we never use that. You know what I'm saying? You either, and a nigga would check you on that. Be in your face. Yo, nah, you acting like a bitch. Period. And that's all right. It could be your man and you can still have love for him. But if you can't say that and a nigga feels some type of way, then that ain't your people. You feel me? And that's what I respect about that interview with Jazz. I ain't gonna front, you know what I'm saying? You did it in the gym, you did it the way Jazz o, in Jazz o way. You know what I'm saying? Cause he's always been humbled and he's never been betrayed, never tried to betray himself to be something he's not. You know what I'm saying? And I respect that. And that's not the first time Jazz o really mentioned my name when it came to Jay anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's just that it's the first time someone said it on a, on a platform and someone with stature to, to, to co-sign and stamp what it really is. You know what I'm saying? And and what's funny is when they asked him about who taught Jay how to hustle with that and shit, and he said that, you know what I'm saying? The the thing that comes up is fuck the haven for caving made man supposed to make statements. Now, I don't know if that's some hate and shit, or that's just what he knows. You feel me? Because he could have mentioned, oh, the Haven introduced me to the game. He should have took the quote of that from the Black album, but he did. But that go to show what they actually was talking about when a person say something about you and shit, a, a purchase on a certain level, and they run off with that, say something about you, and people won't even want to remember that. That's what people remember me as. Fuck the Haven for Caven. Not the Haven introduced me to the game feel me so that's why my fight out here like nah nigga I ain't that nigga you talking about you know what I'm saying so that's just the correction it could be on some hate and shit or it could be just something that he the only he that's the only thing he know that Jay mentioned when it comes to me on record when it's so much other music that I've been mentioned on anyway you know what I'm saying so you know I found that ironic you know what I mean uh, about that but it was a great interview man I had to touch on it and tell Jazz and give Jazz all his flowers, man, and, and that's just what it is. Um, and I loved it, man, because he let he let he let him know, he kind of let us know that he didn't want to participate in shit that wasn't official. 
plain and simple. That's 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 just it, bro. That's all you can get from that interview. It's like, yo, um, I'm a day one nigga from a I'm a day one nigga with him that been around him a day one, right? And been around him from day one. And what I contributed and what I gave him is priceless. And if he J don't feel that way and not gonna treat him that way, he don't need to be around. And that's that's in all due respect. <laughs> and that's in all due respect. So, like I said, man, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. definitely give the jazz all his flowers. And, and that's that's what that's what it is. Um, and I see y'all banging Mad Hoffa's uh comment section down about me being on here. I don't know now. Since that, that's out there, I can't see why I ain't in that lineup, that next lineup. We might as well get it out. Get it all out. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it is. So keep banging his uh comments down, man. Let's see, man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas might be thinking about wanting to fuck with me. If not, it's cool. We see what it is. <laughs> and that's what I mean about me telling my story. Me telling my story was so important because, look, he just co having Jazz co-sign that and shit, that, that goes aligned with my story. You feel what I'm saying? That goes aligned with what I'm writing and what I'm out filming. So that makes it all authentic. But when people try to change that shit, that's when I'm going to be standing up and put my, put my foot on your neck about that. And the next thing I wanted to talk about was the drink champs with uh, Bleak. I've never really discussed anything with Bleak because he's not relevant. Like, he's not really relevant to my story. The only relevancy is that he, you know, he's not relevant to my story. Not meaning that like he's a nobody, but it's like, how to put it? Let me start it off with this first, right? I watch Drink Champs. I don't take Drink Champs serious anyway, because I don't, you know, they, their lineup don't be having, you know, people who, that have any kind of intellect that I can get something from or, so they drink it and they smoke it because I can't, I can't take none of them serious. Most of the time, the people that go on there. Um, so with Bleak on there and listening to how Bleak presenting himself, right? From be, presenting himself and he's been a day one, right? A day one around Jay, not a People got the whole con misconstrued about what day ones is. Some people day ones is, nigga, I, uh, since I started this business, you've been around me from the start. That's a day one. Since I did this, is a day one. Niggas get a lot of shit confused what day one is, right? So when I tell you that Bleak is a day one, Pampers, baby Pampers been around Jay. We watched Bleak grow from a baby, like before I was a baby. His pamp is running around the hallway, everything, right? That's my sister, Bleak's mother is my sister's best friend. Rest in peace, my sister, Fleet, is my sister's best friend. So we be in the same building. Both men traded jabs at one another in the public in the years that followed while living in the same building, but neither of them disclosed all the specifics of their fallout. Jay-Z kept going up, becoming a businessman as well as a legend in the music industry. Mogul was dealing with Rockefeller, Dame Dash was having a lot of financial and legal issues and was not able to achieve the same degree of accomplishment. So I consider Bleak to be a day one, a day one, a real day one to a point where Jay put on record, Bleak don't have to say, do another record or do anything, <laughs> right? Bleak don't have to do anything. Bleak set off for life. Now, we all know that Jay used words and you gotta use crafty and what it means and whatever, whatever, but when you tell someone that and you speak it to the world, like, is that just some shit you saying? Just like that La Familia family shit when everybody is fucked up because they really thought it was a family and it's not a family, it's just some selfish solo shit really going on. So, when Bleak say shit like, I had to call someone, you know what I'm saying, to four or five different peoples to get to this, to get to get whatever he needs, whatever, whatever. 
that is something different. Like that's something different. And I had this discussion with a friend of mine, and me and him, we didn't come to agree with each other because I felt like um me and me around a billionaire since I've been a kid, since I've been a child, me around a billionaire. Um, not even since I've been a child, but I'm just saying, me, myself, I, I could never see me having to call Jay or to any other person for something I needed <laughs> from Jay. I, I just don't see it. I, I would have never even thought about it because um, I'm looking at it like, you know, does Emery have the same, you know, friendship and relationship with Jay does em and, and, and Bleak? Who, who, do, do, do these guys, Tata, do Tata have to, you know what I'm saying, uh, make calls and shit to do this shit, like, I ain't in nobody business, but you can see, like, the shit don't make sense, but that goes back to kind of what Dane be saying, you got leaders and followers, and you got bosses and workers, and it's pretty much Bleak put himself in a position, in a, a working a working position. It's no way you're going to consider yourself to have a relationship with this man. It ain't like you using. I'm not into no using, nigga, because first of all, if I was around that shit, I know I would never be calling him for anything because I would have already aligned myself with those same connections, and that's just what it is. I would already have my own lane. So that seemed too far-fetched that I got to call him like on some shit that be asking for some shit, but... That's me. That's only how I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? That's not how everybody else thinks because it's obvious. You know, I had a discussion and that person didn't feel that way. Um, you can't, a billionaire can't tell me, yo, bro, you ain't got to do shit. You know, whatever, you good. It just, not me. A billionaire is, you can't tell me that. I'm not a using person or abusing situation, but I'm a use that situation. I'm going to use those words that's going to benefit me so I don't even have to really use his name. I got my own name. But I don't expect Bleak to be on that level. He just, he, the, the way he's presenting himself and what he said, that's the level he wants to be on. Like You have to make calls to get certain situations and you've been around the man all your life. But hey, that is what it is. And he wasn't lying about, he said something about, and it's funny because Blake has never mentioned my name at all in nothing. You understand? I ain't mad. He ain't never mentioned my name in nothing. So when he tell you stories about, oh, I was just a little kid and Jay had this and Jay had the air conditioners, the only one in this and that, he, he really know where that come from. You know what I'm saying? He, he knows where that come from. He knows that Jay had an OG, right? That Jay had an OG, a big homie, right? But, hey, we, going, we ain't going to stress that. But he wasn't lying when he mentioned about Emery throwing a party, his going away party and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? When he took his time. And that shit brought me back to that same time that was our trial. While he was while he was throwing parties on on his way and take his time and, and, and doing that, I was in the fucking jail, in prison, but in the law library, looking through my case to beat my case, looking through my shit on top of my game plan. You get what I'm saying? So when Bleak say shit like, "Yeah, Emery took the weight for that. He took the fall for that." I'm gonna have to correct you on that. You know what I'm saying? Emery did his time for what he done, right? Emery did his time for what he done. And he got greatly compensated for it, if that's what you wanna say. Yo, he took, he took one for the whole team. But my question is, if Emery took that for the whole team, what did I do? And we on the same case. It's almost like you guys are saying, like, I didn't get a bag because I didn't go to prison. 
You understand? I didn't get a bag because I didn't go to prison. That shit is like bugged out. And then only to come home and get accused of some snitching shit or whatever, whatever. And that's where we at now. It's so good now that things are coming out now. And um, I'm starting to see these haters go, like I'm looking through my comments. There's not a lot of much haters going on, but much more I believe. Like WAC 100 say, now I'm gonna need you guys to find some hate and shit. I need to find some more haters to attract to my page. Some more hate, man. Some niggas. I need hating chicks. Um, if you could call some people that you know that uh, specialize in hating, I don't want to lose my haters. Don't want to lose my haters. I need y'all to stick around to make this shit happen. My, 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 my regular supporters and my fans and my people that fuck with me, I, I love y'all too. I need y'all too, but need you haters like whack 100 said shout out whack, shout out whack 100 man he said listen man i'm gonna need y'all to put y'all foot all the way down to the floor on this man get call all the haters man tell them that yo you know what somebody this nigga still talking about that same shit i need y'all to keep doing that because y'all make my numbers go down when y'all not hate like that so i need y'all um so this was just the factual shit that i had to see with that uh you know, with these guys, um, and there's no, no, no situation. I ain't down in bleak, but that's what position he want to hold. That's what it is and shit. That's cool. Um, you know what I mean? I just go, this it's a funny fact that this dude don't mention me at all. Like, at all. Man, like, at all. Man. It's just odd. And he's family. You know, when I say he's family, he's like, he's family. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. And that's maybe one of the sensitive things that he that these niggas talk about that Jay don't like. You don't want to give this nigga his flowers. Don't say nothing 